Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to our Urban Complexity Mare series. And you know what? I'm just having a great time, basically reclined in my chair, reading what buildings do, and clicking around. Now, we are still trying to win a tourism victory, naturally, because we are playing the Khmer. Or not the Khmer. Oh my god, the Khmer. <laughs> I got myself mixed up there. That was like last series. Um, we're playing Mare. And we are currently leading in the tourism department, so we definitely want to pick up more tourism. And the best way for us to pick up more tourism is to research things like environmentalism, which will give us a huge tourism boost, as well as just generally work on some of this late game stuff, like shopping malls, all that sort of jazz. Shopping malls gives us plus four tourism. And then there's these late game cards, like online communities, that gives us a little bit of extra tourism. Basically, there's a lot of ways for us to earn tourism, and we're working on them all. So, commercial hub. We have the market, which is good for citizen yields and international trade routes. And then we have the mint, which is good if you have a governor established in the city we don't have a governor established in the city however it does also provide aoe loyalty which could be in of itself quite useful and good baseline gold but i think i might want the emporium do i want the emporium the emporium is quite good if i'm actually sending trade routes from the city but i'm not actually doing that so i will just go ahead and grab the market for that trade route there and i'll also make sure that i'm planting down as many forests as humanly possible. And uh, we are kind of like the last episode's theme. We're mostly just working on a ton of ancient walls and stuff of that nature. Now, Republican Legacy got kicked out or something that I had in here got kicked out. Uh, maybe it was expropriation. Do I want to keep producing settlers? I think I do. And being able to buy tiles for cheaper could actually be fairly handy here. Industrial era or later wonder. I am building the Ruhr Valley, but I want flight right now. So I don't think waiting on that one makes sense. Let's have a look here. Is there anything here that I could use my gold to boost because it would be nice to get a little bit of extra science here kill the unit with a knight build two shipyards i could definitely do shipyards and banks with gold it's a cool little trick with the mare uh, or with the map search is if you type in your civilization's name and then the name of the thing you're looking for it'll actually show up where my commercial hubs are so if i come into taupiri here and i buy the market and the bank in here boom i'll be able to do the exact same thing in makangiapa in three turns and buy the bank there as well and that will nail me the economics uh, civic or the economic boost, which will get me stock exchanges slightly faster, which is definitely something I want. So I know buying gold buildings isn't usually the best return on investment. Uh, I just cannot reach the Malian Empire with my trade route. So I'll go ahead and pop this trader into Otarapa and trade with Mali from there. Uh, we have we have a 90% chance of success. I don't know if gaining sources is worth it when you're at 90%, but this is 1,600 uh, gold to steal. Um, which is absolutely worth it. One of the best things I could be doing with my spy. I have a rice improved here. I could get a paddy field. Now, paddy fields, I think, boost adjacent farms. Yeah, it's good if it's near aqueducts and dams. Um, it gives it a little bit of housing. Uh, there is a dam here, so this isn't a bad food tile. Like, it's a five food tile. I may as well pop that in. That'll keep the city growing. You always want, like, a good mix of growth production and uh, then a sprinkling of gold and everything else. But if you have enough uh, food or, or food in production, rather, your cities will be able to do anything. Renaissance walls finished in Opango. I definitely had a thing for the shipyard, so I'll go ahead and come in here and grab that because that is a five adjacency harbor in there. So that's worth 10 production with the harbor adjacency card that I have plugged in. I got my grove in Capiti. So up next, I, I could in theory buy the sanctuary if I just wanted like giga yields right now. I could probably buy it like next turn. In fact, you know what I'll do? I'll sell off a little bit of my a diplomatic favor and a little bit of my niter and a little bit of my horses grab all three of those and then when i come in here not enough gold in the treasury to buy this what oh it just didn't update properly yeah i gotta i gotta buy the sanctuary in here because that just makes these tiles into giga tiles um that's just really really satisfying for me plus this is now easily like the thumbnail of the video <laughs> oh you guys love your thumbnails I, actually my god this like Civ has really nailed the the game feel aspect of like building up your empire. I got to give it massive props for that. Let's place our pleasure pier in here to lock in its cheap price. And otherwise, we are mostly happy. Pleasure pier will be tourism at flight. I think I also want to get the cabinet. Yeah, I'll grab the... Ah, the mansion has room for great works of art though. But I don't need room for great works of art though. Whereas the cabinet has room for any type. So I think the cabinet's a little bit more flexible. So I'll grab that. Renaissance walls, as per usual. And then we're looking for a trade route with the Malis. Ideally with the highest gold available. Walata, Poifect, 35 gold per turn. Also, speaking of trade routes, um, I think I think it might be okay to maybe buy a trade route in here and see if I can send it somewhere. Lovely. We got our grand hotel 
in uh, Kaw here, which means in theory this should now, yeah, now it's yielding three tourism per turn, which isn't a massive amount of tourism, but it is a reasonable amount. Uh, let's grab our trade dock for the extra trade routes. That's got to be a priority for me. And I wonder how much gold can I get out of here? Looks like I could pick up 36 gold per turn from these trade routes. And that is exactly what I'm going to do. And this is going to be exactly where I do get my traders once I have a bit more room. I need to get a trade route with Mongolia. And so I'll get it from this city. Although in theory, I could get it from a different city. But I think Karakorum is a totally fine city for me to trade with because I just got my trader in here. I don't need to build any more districts in here aside from like a neighborhood and stuff like that. So let's place our pleasure pier. That's a plus three pleasure pier, which will eventually be plus three tourism once we have flight, which is only four turns away. Do I want to build that immediately? What do I want to work on in here? City has surprisingly weak production, but as the city continues to grow, um, it'll stop working this low production harbor and instead start working these high production food tiles. The reason the reason I I put these people in here is because this city was struggling to grow until it gets these um, two trading routes. Speaking of which, it might be worth my while to go for a builder and actually improve those. I've just planted all of the forests ever here, which makes me super satisfied. But it's it's easily the most satisfying thing about civilization is, is, is the construction of really, really epic yields of just going around, improving your empire, making things look wacky and awesome. It's, um, it's, it's one of the big reasons I play the game. It is just such a satisfying experience. I'm going to place my civic square in Fanganui, but I will finish that trader. Harold wants an economic alliance. I will accept that deal. That seems reasonable to me. We got our market over here and we wanted to buy our bank. We do have options, however, just, just to be clear here. Uh, the bank is the one that gives you gold based on the scaling population of the district of the city, which is quite good. The merchant quarter uh, improves your tr international trade routes and gives you gold based on the adjacency of the district. So this can be quite good. Right now, the bank is worth, I think, nine gold per turn. And then the merchant quarter is worth eight. Um, so that's quite good. Really, eight gold per turn from the um, from the merchant quarter. Oh, it, it, I think it just straight up gives. Is that eight gold because I have friendships with city states? No, weird. Oh yeah, it is. It is okay. Speaking of friendships with city states, I've been completely forgetting to use my own voice. I got a little bit distracted by all the game mechanics. So we'll we'll go through and we'll 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 work things out. But yeah, the guild hall is a little bit different as well because it gives plus one gold to all resources in the city. So like the horses, the cotton the citrus so if you have a very resource heavy city it might be worth it like for example capiti over here has two citrus a crab uh, a whales a crab a, a citrus a copper like it has a ton of things that it would be justifiable to put the guild hall in the guild hall is very cool i like that one i'm just going to go for the straight up bank because it scales nicely and it will uh, it will produce based on the population of the city so my gold income will continue to grow many, many turns from now. And plus that boost means I now have access to economics, which was one of my goals. I have trade routes with everyone. So mostly I can just start looking for uh, high gold trade routes now. There's a 20 turn Huey here, <laughs> but it's a single tile lake. You know what? To troll the AI, I'm going to try and build it. They they troll me by doing it all the time. So I feel like it's my turn to get a little, just a, just a smidge of vengeance. Okay, just a smidge. Nice, we've got our marina, which is going to give us plus one tourism for every fishing boat in the city, which is quite nice. Do I want the casino or the aquarium? The aquarium gives me science from coastal resources, whereas the casino gives me extra tourism for every wonder built in the city on or adjacent to the coast, which is about two extra tourism in here, which isn't bad at all. And it would scale quite nicely if I go for the aerodrome. So I think I go for the casino here. We got a trade dock in here. We'll very quickly grab ourselves a trader. The adjacency on this harbor isn't actually that high. So I may not go for the shipyard. And instead, I'll pick up something like... Oh, it's actually a 10 production building. Wow. Why is that so high? That's so much production. It's so hard to pass that up when it's so valuable. Although theoretically, the haven is worth two gold per water tile here. Because this is on a different continent. So potentially four gold per tile, but 10 production, man. It's so hard to turn up 10 production. It's it's an insane, insane amount of money or insane amount of production. Let's go ahead and buy the windmill in Ruritoria. That'll help out this city with a little bit of adjacency. If I go ahead and open this up and rework a tile, it's gotten another five production in total. And quite a bit of that is coming from the industrial zone now, which I'm quite happy about. Nice. Our agent stole to uh, 1200 gold and I totally forgot to do my envoys. 
I reckon it would be a good idea to go up to level two with both of these guys because that is like an extra 30 gold per turn just on that alone. I don't think I care about trading domes. I don't think I care about Susan Tree of a lot of these guys. It would be okay to eventually put a couple points at the Singapore. Um, Chinguetti would be amazing to be suzerain of because it's a, an insane amount of faith. Bologna, I want to be suzerain of. Those, those are extra great people points. Very cool. Don't care about Vatican City. I do want to be suzerain of Vilnius because that's a lot of extra adjacency on my civic square. So I need to start thinking about alliances. Right now, I only have a level one alliance and it's going up reasonably quickly. We will hit a level two alliance. So that'll be 100% uh, civic square adjacency if I can maintain Vilnius. Granada, I don't care too much about. I don't care about Geneva. Kumasi could be good to take Susan to The hokey amount I don't care about. Cardiff, unironically, is pretty good this game. I'll, I'll make friends with Cardiff. And actually, how long is left on this era? We've got plenty of time on this era. Let's have a quick look through the missions. So one wants you to build an aerodrome. I will do that. Great Merchant may happen. Eureka for printing, not going to happen. So I may just prioritize researching that to recycle this and get a new mission. Constructing an encampment could happen. Recruit a great artist, that will for sure happen. Sending a trade route to Singapore could happen. Two constructed encampments, two great artists. A scientist, conversion, trade routes, trade routes. Someone wants me to train a biplane. Eureka for steel, trade routes. So it looks like I would say big priorities for me are to recruit a great artist, recruit a great scientist, build an aerodrome and an encampment. And that would get me a lot of envoys, those few actions there. Let's get a great admiral. This will give me 500 gold plus 60% rewards for pillaging sea trade routes. Let's get the civic score in here. We want our Mare to be getting those extra yields from our forests. You are going to go ahead and level up. I'm going to take Linguist here so he does his missions faster. Doing his missions faster gives me a little bit more flexibility. There's nothing really here that I want, so I'm going to skip out on settling that kind of nonsense. There is a weird coastal settle somewhere. All right, boom, settler down. We will go ahead and do this. We'll buy these two tiles and then immediately get ourselves a naturalist. Oh my God, I can faith buy things in the city. Boom, instantaneously faith buy that and the two fishing tiles. I probably only needed to buy one because of the culture bomb, but whatever. We can get a national park in here super fast. I think I may skip the preserve and turn this into an encampment instead and just make that a priority. Although then again, it was the appeal that I was relying on there. So yeah, never mind that plan. Yeah, we'll leave this as is. Let's get working on that harbor. It's going to be the big way that we feed this city. I'll buy the monument and the granary in here so the city starts spreading its borders nice and quick. I am sitting on a governor title. Let's say curator for the extra tourism. Geneva is getting murdered, which is unfortunate. I wish I, I wish I could send them money or something to help them to defend themselves. We have access to flight. Now we can get working on the aerodrome and importantly, the airport uh, and stuff like that. We have access to mass media, which gives us propaganda. We definitely want the Crystal Red and Tour or do we? We're not really going for seaside resorts. So maybe we'll skip it. But the media center will be quite good for the 5% culture, uh, which will also increase if the city is powered. And the extra amenity is quite good as well as the great people points, all things that we want to get to work on. I reckon I want airports here. 25% uh, tourism pressure seems like it's super worth maybe getting radio like fits in nicely with my game plan here radio is broadcast center aluminum seaside resorts then maybe computers i don't know not sure exactly see that's the thing would, would a modded game kind of things generally follow a similar cadence but you're not exactly sure where things go but i'm definitely going to pick up mobilization ideology and eventually capitalism probably want to get stock exchanges before i did that in fact maybe i prioritize that no I think I just want to go for flight. I want to get airports ASAP. I do not remember if we chose between the botanical garden or the zoo. It's just worth a lot of amenities. Is there anything I really want to work on in here district wise? Not really. One curiosity I have is how this tourism yield works. Because I have flight now. Okay. So if I come down here and I look at this city, right? Each of these tiles, so yeah, the tourism from untamed woods does not scale or untamed features does not scale. It's just plus one per. But my tourism is now up to 300, which is a huge, huge jump. But that's great. Our tourism is going to continue to scale based on the amount of land we're getting. We're getting pretty good baseline tourism now with flight. And really, it's just about scaling hard into the late game. Ah... Uh... See, the adjacency is plus two on there. If I get the Grand Hotel, it would be another two adjacency plus tourism. Yeah, let's get the Grand Hotel. We want to, we want to start like prioritizing getting as much tourism ASAP, like right now. Also, do I have another Museum of Archaeology yet? No, I don't. I'm working on my next one. I'm sitting on a governor title. Industrialist isn't bad considering I have him stationed in my capital. And I could yeet him over to Tomutu for the better power production. 
Alternatively, I could do something with Liang. Actually, you know what? Reina totally makes sense here. I'll grab Reina and I'll appoint her into Farakawa because I am doing international trade routes from there. And then I'll just put religious man in like Tamutu because this is where I have St. Basil's Cathedral built where I'm getting crazy uh, tourism yields from that. Oh, I really, need a, I really need a civic square in this city, don't I? Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll pop it right there. Now, one thing you have to know about is if you speed up a unit's uh, time to complete missions, it will actually steal less gold because the amount of gold that is stolen is based on the production of the city. So if you spend eight turns stealing, you are only going to you're going to steal eight turns worth of, of worth of gold. But if you spend um, 10 turns, if you spend six turns stealing, you're going to steal six turns worth of gold. So that's something something to keep in mind, something to keep abreast of, keep at the back of the old noggin. File it away as important information. Also, wasn't I meant to build a Venetian arsenal here? Yeah, I was. Um, maybe I could use gold to accept accelerate this city. All right, let's see what we can do. The city is struggling to grow. So the obvious solution to that is to give it a tile that'll help it to grow or to just work even more production. Buy a fishing dock to get the city to grow a bit quicker. Buy a workshop to get the city producing faster and then slap down the Venetian arsenal so we can actually build it. Currently tra trading with Yerevan. Are there any city states that I can hit here? I can hit Kagwana for an envoy. I will. Plus that spreads my uh, tourism, which are my uh, religion rather, not tourism. Boom, plant woods. Boom, plant national park. Amazing. We can delete all these pins now. You'll probably want another guy, but I'm going to prioritize these now. Up to nearly a thousand gold per turn, which is very satisfying. I'm just going to buy the monument. And we'll buy the chancery at some point in the future. Let us begin. Uh, pack it up, pack it in. We got to get this city on the roll, man. So we'll place our pleasure pier and our harbor in here. Boom, boom. We got our harbor, pleasure pier and civic square. All three of them. Um, in terms of the greatest amount of tourism, getting the civic square and the mare up is the greatest amount of tourism in the short term. So that's what we are going to work on. Naturally, we are trying to get as much tourism as soon as possible. I would like to trade for gold, but if I do have the option to trade for envoys with like the Vatican City, ooh, that's kind of a dangerous trade route. Let's send it and then we'll protect it with a warrior. There's a frigate down here, which I don't like. I want to get rid of that frigate. It's going to cause me issues. Boom, fair ground placed. Let's get the civic square. Again, civic squares represent a ton of tourism for me right now. This city just really needs like a gold investment. Granary, Fishing dock, monument, granary, I think granary, monument, fishing dock into trade dock. We'll keep this city busy for long enough for it to be useful. Although I do want to get those ancient walls up, but maybe we're not right now. One of my spies was caught, we'll escape on foot. And we did, and we got away with the 1600 gold, which means we've got 3k in the bank. Sounded like a city just got annihilated there. I'm not sure though. Uh, what was that? Yeah, Valletta was just killed, which I hate actually. Hang on. Oh, that's not good. I think Valletta was straight up murdered there and I don't remember where they were, which really sucks because I was using them to, to faith purchase things. Um, I'm sad about that. I liked having Valletta. There's got to be like an empty city spot somewhere. Unfortunately, it's not showing up where Valletta used to be, but like I could also search road. But like that's a stupid amount of tiles that have roads on them. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know where Valletta... Oh, there it is. Huh. Could I liberate Valletta? Make demand, okay? Give me... I can't demand Valletta. Does this city just technically not exist for a short period of time? I would definitely like to try to liberate Valletta though. So maybe like paratroopers or something making friends with Mongolia. I'm hoping a city-state emergency triggers over that, to be honest. I, that would make me super happy. So this civic square, the Opera House or the Grand Hotel? The Opera House has room for great work. The Grand Hotel gives me straight tourism immediately. This thing does not have very good adjacency. But it will eventually be plus two. What is the appeal on this tile? Uh, the appeal is quite low. I would have to I would have to use a builder over here to replace this with a forest and then it would be okay to go uh, Grand Hotel. And I think I will go Grand Hotel. I think I had planned a bunch of airports, right? But not enough. I had an airport here that covered all this. I had an airport here that covered all this. And that should be fine, yeah. We got our Renaissance walls in Kayapoi. Cool, so we're cranking out tourism now. We will grab the orchard to give the city something resembling a growth tile because it is just bad for food right now. Spending a lot of my money to extend my borders and buy resources. Um, I think it's just important to get them online at this point. The more resources I have, the stronger my empire is. The better the tiles that I'm working, the better my cities are. All that sort of stuff. There is a bad guy coming. Right, we now have access to steam power. This gives me access to the Panama Canal, which has been largely unchilled. We also have access to the Commodity Exchange. This is a commercial hub building and it's actually the second source 
of a trade route from a commercial hub. Interesting. So the airport is another way to get your second trade route in a city. In fact, they're called trade route B. So there's an A trade route, which comes from the market or the lighthouse. And then there's a B trade route that comes from the airport or the commodity exchange. Now, you only get the second trade route from the commodity exchange if the city also has a trade dock. So you have to build both a harbour and a commercial hub to make that work. Very interesting. Whereas I believe, if I'm not wrong, the airport just gives you that B trade route straight away. So that is very interesting. On top of that, we have access to the canal, which is largely unchanged, as is the ironclad and the railroad. I would like to start railroad, ra railroading my empire. I don't think I actually ever improved any coal inside my borders, though, um, which is definitely a mistake I have to correct. Oh, he he absolutely. We are we are gearing up for war here to take back Valletta. And I need to start planning. How do I actually take this city back? It's largely going to be some sort of army coming through Mongolia. So making friends with Mongolia here is going to be a really big deal. I'm going to get mutual open borders with him. I'm going to give him open borders. I'm actually going to send him an embassy. I'll even send him a gift of like 200 gold, 300 gold, just to get his friendship up. And maybe I can get a militaristic ally with him. Actually, he just straight up declared a friendship. Military alliance, boom, awesome. Now I can get him to declare war on Mansa Musa in this emergency. And we should be able to... Uh, also buy all of his things here later on but yeah okay so now i have my ally in this guy i'll grab myself a great artist which was a mission for a ton of these guys pop my settler into the water skadoosh and now i need to start thinking about a military so this is largely on land what do i have access to in terms of strong military units at this stage of the game really the observation balloon is like my main asset so i'm obviously going to grab myself an observation balloon as part of my war effort this city is too far away to help the war effort, so it won't be helping. We'll instead go for the Mare because it's worth a lot of tourism. I'll probably be heavily using my gold. Like if a unit takes more than 10 turns to build, I'll be heavily using my gold to assist here. You go ahead and grab me that trade dock. So I'm going to pump a lot of Diplo favor in here to make this mission pass. He has 121 Diplo favor to vote it down. And I expect a few of the other civs to vote down. So I need to vote up at least this much plus like two extra votes in order to guarantee that this passes with a couple of extra naysayers and i might even i might even just go the full 10 votes to make sure this happens because i really want this war to go off because i want to liberate valletta because i love valletta and two i want this bonus the plus one gold for all of my envoys so definitely overkilled it by a lot harold put in seven i was expecting a couple of down votes so maybe going this hard was probably too much but it's not like I'm using my Diplo favor for much else other than gold. So now we're at war and we can do a lot now. I'm going to change my tech. I'm going to immediately get to work on bombards. I think at, the, at a minimum with bombards and observation balloons, I should be able to break Valletta alongside the use of some uh, stuff here. Now, where did I have my ironworks? I think I had an ironworks in Opango. Or maybe I never built an ironworks. I think I want to get an arsenal to allow me to build cores and armies. I could buy the arsenal, then come in here, start training a trebuchet that will become a bombard. I'll also grab myself a military engineer to start building railroads because I need to get my units to this port ASAP. I got my casino in here. I think we're going to prioritize building a military. I'll need like some infantry units to protect my guys so maybe a few man at arms to act as frontline at least i'll get one man at arms and then probably upgrade it to a musketman i'll promote reina with harbor master for the extra adjacency on harbors and stuff like that and we'll also trade with vilnius here for the extra envoy because that is worth an envoy all right let's go through our list of actual military units and see what we have laying around we've got a lot of frigates that's no use we have a trebuchet that is useful we have a scout that could be useful. We have a warrior hanging around up here in the Vatican, so I'll get him moving this sort of a direction. I have a couple of horsemen whose use would be limited to pillaging. Unless I upgrade them to coursers, then maybe they could become cavalry and come assist in the war. Maybe with pillaging. We also got ourselves a great work, which is cool. I have a crossbowman down here. Your purpose is primarily defensive, so there's no need for you to be participating in battle. I have a toa all the way up here. You could become a musketman on the front line. And then mostly it's just scouts. Scouts running around. Doing scout-like things. Right, we stole 500 gold. Beautiful. 
we got our grand hotel in here, so now we're producing. I'm going to get to work on more trebuchets because I want at least two to three trebuchet armies slash um, thingies. Oh, I forgot to get coal. It's an expensive builder, but I'm going to buy it here and get that coal in this city online as a priority. So we can start building our rail. We got our dam over here. You're too far to help the war effort as well. So you can just get a water mill. Keep yourself busy. I'm going to level up my spy with con artist so he's better at stealing gold because it's one of the important missions that I want to be doing. Otherwise, it's mostly business as usual as I move units around doing their jobs. Yeah, I feel like stealing from Mali would be the right move here. He's actually doing quite well. So the more I can hurt him, the better. Lovely. There is musketmen and quarries being better. And if I was playing the Ottomans, I'd get a governor title, which is kind of neat. Uh, I also have almost 400 tourism per turn. And I have 38 out of 223 tourists. So I'm doing quite well. I'm on track for, for a, a reasonable win. I will go for the Marais because that's my win condition right there. Those are my win condition districts that I need to be like getting ASAP. I'll also place the pleasure pier here. Just kind of like already did our planning and now it's about execution, which is kind of like my favorite, like satisfying watching the numbers grow part of the game. I definitely want a museum of archaeology in here. So we'll get, in, get to work on like things like the cabinet. I mean, maybe it would be kind of neat to build the Torre de Belim. Let's do it. Let, let, let's let's try to build a few wonders. Like we always win the game so fast. Maybe it would be a bit more fun if we stuck around and just built a few extra wonders, you know? Um, maybe that would make the game more interesting for the viewer and stuff. You know what I'm saying, guys? What do you guys think? Do you think, do you, do you actually, actually, that is actually a legitimate question. Do you, do you think I win the game too fast? Do you want me to occasionally in my games, like just hang around and, uh, you know, build a bunch of wonders and like basically just screw around, dominating the game, getting wonders, and not worrying about what turn I win the game on, but rather how dank my empire is when I win the game. Because like we could totally go down that route if that's something you guys are into. All right, nice. So we're in position to start pillaging a little bit of the Mali next turn. This Corsair is a little bit vulnerable until I get access to cavalry, but it should be fine. We got our observation balloon. It's time to start moving units to the front. I'll build myself another trebuchet because that'll be my second trebuchet army. And then this city will also build me a trebuchet army. Yeah, I, I think I need to do like more war. I feel like I need to do more war in my games and win slower. I know that sounds crazy, but it's legitimately how I feel. This city is lacking housing, so I feel like a granary and a fishing wharf would be good. I'm also just going to straight up place the harbor here. Let's see, I mean, there's a few good spots. If I settle right here, I get a good harbor. Here's an interesting spot for a city. Man, there's actually a few kind of interesting spots for cities around here. If I settle on the wine, it's not too bad. I get a kind of one tile island deal yeah let's settle on the wine place the harbor we'll use a little bit of gold fishing dock granary monument that'll just get the city barely going and we'll buy a fishing tile and the city will start to grow and work tiles well it slowly 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 builds the harbor for me try not to spend too much of my money on um on, on new tiles all right so we replaced the forest here which means the appeal of this tile went up which means in theory if I remember what key the thing is. Why didn't the adjacency go up here? Oh, I haven't actually finished the Grand Hotel. Okay, I'm a dummy. Never mind. <laughs> I was like, why did my appeal go up? It's because you haven't finished the building that increased, that like scales off the appeal. Or not appeal, adjacency rather. It looks like the Mongols might retake that, which is not good for me. Because I need to actually participate in this in order to get credit. Now, I do have a courser inside of his borders, but I think I need to get more units inside of his borders ASAP. Fastest way down here this is all just cliffs. So the fastest way to his empire is actually through the Mongols, believe it or not. And I should be able to upgrade my units inside the Mongols' territory. It may not even be necessary for me to really help in that war, but I want I want Valletta to be independent. Plus, it kind of get, it makes the game more interesting as a story. I feel like I spent too much of my time rushing for the for the win in these games. Oof. Okay, they levied Yerevan's military. I am sitting on five envoys. Let's follow you back there. I like this. I like that the observation balloon gives the trebuchet plus one range as well. Like, <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. So that was the three trebuchets I needed for another military. We'll spend another little bit of time on muskety boys. Just a few muskets will do the trick. You only need a few. Like a little bit, a little bit of rattlesnake venom is all you need. I, I, honestly, I don't even know if rattlesnakes have venom. Morbus, fact check me. Fact, fact check me. Ooh. I reckon a civic square in this city is appropriate. How's global warming, by the way? It's fine. 102 turns. So I have a little bit of time before I need to rush down for computers. Um, that number will get worse quickly is one of the dangers of this game. And you can start hitting flooded tiles way earlier than you really are prepared for it. Oh man, that Corsair just teleported across the map. 
As long as I get a as long as I get a gold medal here, I'm okay. And I'll get a hundred diplo favor refund, which isn't like amazing, but plus one gold per envoy is pretty good. And I get to have Valada back, which is kind of neat. And now I have a military at only a small diversion of my empire's resources. This absolutely was just a win for me. I got a chance to disrupt my opponent's economy. Ooh, Quirassier coming in hard and hitting my courser. Oh, we got the Ruhr Valley. 20% production and plus one production for each mine and quarry in the city. Damn. I'm pretty sure I saw like one of these. I think I saw like a, a, like a video or a, a picture of a rave at an abandoned mine. And there was like one of these like structures. It kind of looked like this. I think it was like a quarry thing. And uh, two people had climbed that quarry structure and they were banging on top of it as like an entire rave watched. And I was like, dude, what the hell? I think it was in Germany, like some abandoned mine in Germany. It's like, this kind of parties I don't want to, <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to go to that kind of party. It's a bit... People get a bit freaky. So I could get the coal power plant here and these cities are requesting power. Uh, minus two appeal to all tiles in this city though. That sucks. The city isn't really a tourism generator, so I think it is fine to go for the coal power plant. Although maybe I want to go straight for oil. Eh, let's just go for the coal power plant, whatever. Uh, so it's time to pick our late game government here. We got to choose from democracy, fascism and communism. Personally, I feel like communism is best set to go for a science victory. Fascism is best set to go for a domination. And democracy is best set to go for a culture victory. So naturally, we will be picking democracy. And then we'll backfill for capitalism maybe in a little while. And democracy and capitalism sound familiar, kids. We got our Mare in Tamutu. Beautiful. We're getting plus one tourism on all of these cool tiles. We got our Grand Hotel in here. And finally... We're getting two culture from this tile's appeal and there should be an extra little bit of tourism as well. Awesome. Plus three tourism from this district. Does that actually, whoa, here's a question that I didn't think about. Does that mean, commercial hub and harbor adjacency, does that mean that the civic square adjacency bonus gives you extra tourism? Oh, that might actually change things if so. Cause that could potentially be a huge deal. How badly do we want this media center? 2% culture, 10% culture, da 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 da. No tourism, great people points, amenities, all good things. I think we go for the pleasure pier. Don't think we go for the commodity exchange in here. Boom. I don't like that this kind of lowers my appeal over here, but I do want the coal really badly. And plus that's like a 12 production mine somehow. All right. I'm baffled how this is a 12 production mine, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know what? The game, the game is just handing me free yields. I'm not going to question it anymore. All hail the mighty yield. Hey, we did it. Valletta is liberated. Amazing. And I'm going to get a gold star. I better get a gold star. I swear to God. I participated, okay? I he I'm helping. I'm Jarvan. <laughs> I'm helping. I didn't even have time to get troops over there, dude. They solved that issue just like instantly. Only one way to find out if I got credit. Uh, if I put an envoy into Valletta and I confirm, I get two gold. Oh, yeah, baby. Now, that's what I call... A spicy meme. Let's buy the shipyard in Fangaroa and then we'll start placing some districts like campus because I want one of those. I also want an industrial zone. Um, we're working mostly improved tiles here. Yeah, that's fine. Campus online first. I think one of the, a couple of city states wanted me to get like a great scientist or something. There's more coal down here that I can claim. There's also more. I may spend my gold on buying settlers here. What else would you spend your money on except expanding your empire? I mean, the nice thing is this guy just like left himself wide open for more pillaging. So, I mean, like, if he's going to leave himself open, I'm going to steal his money. My God, Mongolia has drones? Drone tech is at computers. Jesus Christ. I guess it's probably not necessary for me to go to war anymore. So I guess I'll stop building military units. I mean, I'll keep, the, I'll keep the ones I have, of course, naturally. Why would I disband a military that I got Parliament to approve? I'm going to clone wars my own empire. It's like, aha, we needed this military, and now I shall use it against you. Oh my god, we got the magical number 420 tourism per turn! Oh man, you know what? 420 tourism per turn, it did dip down to 416, but you all saw the number with 48 tourists out of 234. That's a good point to end the episode. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!